What? Oh, sorry. You wanted some? No? But what if you did? How would you ask? Now today, I'm going to tell you all about how a single slice of pizza redefined the way I interact with people. And specifically, I'm going to talk to you about the dark and the invisible side of negotiation. Now, it all started up with a research project I've been up to. It was with the primary education children. So I went into schools, and I gave them a scenario that will help me discover their negotiation tactics. The scenario goes like this. It was a story, actually. So a group of people are very, very hungry, so they order pizza. And the pizza comes, and they eat, and they eat, and they eat until there is only one piece left. And then I gave them four negotiation types that they could use to claim that last piece. Remember, everybody's hungry, okay? Let's play. I will have the last piece. This is the first type. The second, it's okay. You can have the last piece. I'm all full, but he wasn't. It's okay, you take it, even though my doctor recommends that I should eat well every two or three hours. Just leave me here to die, that's okay. And he gets that piece. I'm still hungry. Anyone else still hungry? What about if we split? And then I ask those children to give me a description, using one word, a description, for that negotiation persona I have just presented. So let's go again and try to think your own descriptions in your head as we speak, as if you were the children. I will have the last piece. So the children told me that he was the aggressive guy. The bad guy. It's okay, you can have the last piece. That was the good guy, the polite guy, the gentle guy. The one with the doctor, he was the manipulative guy, the deceiving guy. And the last one, they told me he was the fair because he wanted to split things. So that was the first phase of my research. And I went home that day and I was thinking about those results. And something was bothering me. Something didn't quite add up in my head. And it was about that guy. I mean, all the people were hungry, right? But he decided to give his piece away to make all other people happy. Isn't that something repressed? Isn't that submissive? Isn't that something bad instead of good when we're talking about negotiation? So I did a little digging in the bibliography and I found out that there is a dark side of negotiation and it is related to that exact persona. Statistically, that guy, when he's a grown-up, he will lose up to $1,400 in failing to negotiate big buys, such as a car, for example. And over the whole course of their lives, they will lose up to $600,000 by failing to negotiate a salary or even buying a house and not negotiate. They will do anything they can to avoid claiming what is rightfully theirs. Striking news, huh? So, and that's not only it. They also show signs of depression because of all that repression. So, I consider that it was my duty after finding this to enable those children with the tools to live a healthier financial and maybe psychological life.
So I decided to update my cards. I put a little, a little emojis on the back. So the emojis was about how do I feel when I adopt these behaviors, and how do they feel when I adopt this behavior? And let's go once again. I will have the last piece. How do I feel? I feel fine. I got my way, right? I ate. But how do others feel? Not good. How about the second guy? How do I feel? You take the last piece, I'm all full. I'm not okay. And that's the dark aspect of negotiation, to make all other, other people happy. And the kid seemed to absorb that idea. The next one was easy. He was manipulating. He got his way because he was deceiving others. But not all others are happy. And the fair guy was the only one that got a win-win situation. And I, I started getting into their minds. Okay, Mr. Savas, they told me, we want to be the fair guy, a win-win situation. So you want to be the fair guy? Let's play a game then. I want you to play the game with me, if you're up to. You'll need a couple. You don't have to move. It's fairly easy. So in order to play the game, you need to grab your couple with your right hand, four fingers, something like this, with your thumbs sticking up in the air, and pretend that you were the children now. So I don't have another right hand, so I'll do it like this. So when I, when I say go, I'll count to 10, and you have 10 seconds to get as many thumb downs as you can from the person sitting opposite to you. Are we ready to go? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Excellent thumb fighting. You might be working out. Anyway, the children were also thumb fighting. And I asked the children, children, by a show of fingers, who got the most thumb downs? I could see this, I could see this. Fewer twos, one boy had four thumb downs. And I asked him, how about you, son? How do you feel? He told me that he felt great. I'm the winner. I'm on top of my class. The best thumb ever. How about you? I asked his opponent. Not so good. He beat me. He beat me bad. So it was a win-lose situation, right? Like most of you people here. Besides two children. The two children I have instructed beforehand to do something different. Instead of thumb fighting, they did some thumb collaborating. So the first kid for the first five seconds went like this, thumb down, and the second went <laughs> like 20 thumb downs in five seconds, and after that, whoa, 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 my turn now. <laughs> Another 20 thumb downs in five seconds. So we have 20, 20. Compare that to four and zero. I didn't tell you to fight. I didn't tell the children to fight. I primed you to fight with words such as opposite, with my hand movements, but the rules were very open to different interpretations, right? What am I getting at? Under the right circumstances, you can be either one of these personas. And which one were you? This one. I will have the last piece. I will have the most thumb downs. <clears throat> so this is the invisible side of negotiation. The invisible side says that under the right circumstances, you may be either one of these personas. You may even be the manipulative one. But more often than not, when we spark competition, the aggressive one pops out. And when we get aggressive, we may limit ourselves to creative, amazing solutions. So now you're ready to go to the next stage of my research, to listen about the fair. 
But in order to listen about the fair, we need to step aside from the pizza story to get an orange. Now, I have two kids fighting over an orange. I have an orange, I have a knife. What do you do? Of course, I stab one and I give the orange to the other guy. <laughs> Just kidding. I slice it up and I get these wonderful halves. You take this one, you take this one, get out of here. That would be perfect 20 years ago, but now we know more about negotiation. And I have a little story for you that will make you understand the value of the orange. I read about it in the one, perhaps one of the most influential books ever written about negotiation. It was Getting to Yes by Fisher and Uri. It was that exact story, actually. It was called The Orange Quarrel. So what The Orange Quarrel says that two kids are fighting over an orange, but they have the extreme scenario that the one kid wants the orange to bake a cake, or he just wants the peel. He doesn't want the inside. And the other kid wants the orange to make orange juice. So if I give that to this one and that to this one, what do I get? 50% of the product, 50% satisfaction, and something that he doesn't want and something that he doesn't want. He doesn't want the inside, he doesn't want the peel, right? But he had, if I had only thought more three-dimensional. That's a split, right? I can give this, the peel here, the inside here. 100% satisfaction for that side, 100% satisfaction for that side. And that is what a modern negotiation is all about. And I know what you're thinking. Not all scenarios can give us 100% satisfaction for each side. I'm with you. But research demonstrates, clearly demonstrates that more often than not, we can achieve more than the traditional 50-50. And I have a story to back that up. It's a story from my home country, Cyprus. So it has a, a little butchery there, which was going really well because of its owner. He, the owner was an amazing guy, hardworking, honest, intelligent, clean. So the people loved him. They loved him. So his business was growing by the minute. He was actually stepping on the stoves of some big businesses around. So they eventually, a big hypermarket, came over to buy him. They came back, they came with a big financial offer, which he refused. He didn't even blink. They came back with a second offer. Still no. They came back with a third financial offer that he could easily retire. But he still said no. So what they did is that they really sat in the negotiation table that time, and they really tried to find out where is he coming from, what, it, what does he really want from that. And they understood that he just wanted to continue doing what he was doing best. He loved what he was doing, and he didn't want to stop, he didn't want to leave. So what they did is that they came back with the first financial offer, and they added a five-year contract of him running the business as a manager under a different name, a different franchise. And he took it. So what they did was that they, they have managed to keep an amazing employee that was hardworking and intelligent and honest. And they got the business they want, but also the, the former now owner, he managed to continue working at his job, doing what he does best, plus a bunch load of money for his pocket. They split the peel, the inside of an orange. They even split the stem with the leaves. They didn't leave anything to the negotiation table. And that is what modern negotiation is all about. Think three-dimensionally. Try to uncover positions and then bridge those interests you uncovered with intangible th things that matter to people. So the next time you'll find yourself trying to negotiate something you really, really, it really matters for you, try to think of, of, of ways to avoid the dark side of negotiation first, because remember, the good guy is not the good guy in negotiation. It's actually something bad. 
try to also be aware of the invisible side of negotiation. Because when aggressiveness is sparked, you may lose from your creativity. And finally, if you want to be the fair, try to think three-dimensionally. The first thing you need to do is uncover the interest behind the position. And then you need to bridge those interests with something that really matters for the other side, which many times are intangible things. Think three-dimensionally. And who knows? One day you might be able to split things and still get away with 100% of what you want. It was great, Lausanne. Thank you.